Hey, it's Matt from Black Hole Woodworking. Welcome back. I'm practicing my skew chisel today, and I'm taking you along on my little journey. It's not going to be perfect, but it was fun. I'm making a honey dipper, and first thing is to plane down the block of wood so it's round. I'm trying to use a bit of a planing and peeling cut at the same time. That happens to be like this. You get big amounts of wood taken off. They're a little flatter in angle to the wood, and it works pretty good. This piece of wood seemed to have a knock in it, so I didn't know if it was round. I had to stop and check. Spoiler alert, the dismount on this piece at the end is not good. Next up, I cleared a bit of space at the front so that I wouldn't have the point into the end of the honey dipper. And I mark out how big the round part's gonna be and the middle point. And then from here, I'm using that same planing, peeling cut. Gotta keep that bevel locked on the wood. You don't even have to move too fast. You just have to be accurate. Doing the other side's fun too, because I'm switching hands when I do that. So it's good practice, really. Then I start marking out where I want the divides to be. I'm going to mimic a Steve Jones honey dipper. If you ever watch him, that guy's fantastic. So for me, lots of practice on creating beads here with these little grooves in the honey dipper. I used to sharpen my skew where the heel of it would be rounded toward, I guess, giving a bit of an arc, but I found that I couldn't see when I'm trying to do these types of cuts, and this seems to work better for me. It also seems to work well for doing a planing cut, and uh, the planing cut where I'm half peeling at the same time. So I've tried to adopt this style of grinding and sharpening, and it's pretty easy and uh, works pretty well for me. To reduce the bulk on the handle, I'm using that same kind of planing peeling cut. Well, that was a happy little accident. Had to be more careful getting near the parts I've already cut. In my practice sessions, I sometimes end up making this stick too thin, so this time I opted to make it a little too thick. Makes it take a little bit longer, but overall, I think this honey dipper took me about six minutes in total, which is a far cry from the 15 I used to be at. So with the waste on the stick cleared away, it gave me an opportunity to clean up the edge of that uh, honey dipper there. Now for the back end, I'm gonna do some peeling planing again. Gotta bring that bulk down. Then I'd like to round over the bottom of the handle. And I'd like to give it a functional decoration spot. Just a bit of a bead there. I find that it makes it a little bit easier to hang on to. Of course that means I've got to remove a little more waste. And as I get close to the bead, I make sure to point the tip or the heel of the skew chisel in there to the bead so that I can get a nice clean edge and I don't damage the, the bead. And I will have to clean the bead up a little bit more yet. And as I'm getting to the other side, I kind of use the skew as a negative rake scraper. To cut the cove in the end, I'm using a half inch spindle gouge. I used to try to do this with the skew, but it's really not using the right tool for the right job. I could kind of do it, but it took forever, and it wasn't nearly as clean. I do like that bead to have a little bit of a flat spot on it. Just seems to be my preference. A final cleanup with the point of the skew, and you've got a nice crisp little flattened bead.
at the top. I've got to cut down that waist in the end there. I'm just using the toe of the skew to kind of whittle it down. I try to get it as small as possible so I can kind of snip it off with the skew at the end. Just trying to round it over with that little skew. Works pretty well. Time to take out more of that waste on the back end. Again, I'm trying to make the amount I take off at the end as small as possible. And this is where the dismount gets funny. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.